welcomed home by thousands, but also along the route of protest. Muslim demonstrators with placards and anti-war slogans. The police say they're planning the largest operation in their history to deal with a protest organised by the English Defence League in Luton next month. Unite Against Fascism are planning to hold a counter-demonstration. Around 6,000 protesters are expected and at least 1,500 police will be drafted in to deal with them. A shopkeeper has described the moment he was besieged in his store when a march through Luton last year turned violent. First tonight. Their far-right rallies have ended in violent scenes in other parts of the country. Now they're planning a protest in one of our most multicultural of cities. Luton, a South Bedfordshire town internationally known as the birthplace of the English Defence League and opposing Muslim extremists. 15% of the town's population are Muslim, a figure five times higher than the national average. In this film, I explore Luton's battling communities where communication is no man's land, a multi-faith society fighting to find its own identity. It will kick off. Be, at some point, I'm telling you, that we, we, I know you, you can go out there and talk to people on this estate alone that we've had a 15-year-old boy, or autistic boy, battered and robbed. We've had a 16-year-old uh, lad, 21 stitches at 4 o'clock in the afternoon in his face. We've had a girl stabbed. This is all by Muslims. We've had, we've had another woman who's crying in her house every day because they're smashing up her house every day because they, they want to buy her house. All these different things. We've tried to talk to the council. We asked the council to have a meeting up here with, with the police and the council. They refuse her. They just refuse. That's their job, is to listen to concerns by community, and there's big concerns. You're going to speak to people, there's big concerns what's going on. And, and at one point, when the police fail you, which they are, at some point, there's going to be a spark. And, we, and, and everyone will be scratching their heads as to what's going on, why is looting on fire? Well, you, you keep ignoring it. The English Defence League say they oppose the Islamification of England and Muslim-dominated areas such as Berry Park. Saiful Islam, leader of extremist group Muslims Against Crusades, can often be seen here publicly preaching hate. And with the large Asian community, Berry Park has often found itself in the centre of cultural clashes, labelled as a hotbed for terrorism and a no-go zone. What I could say sincerely to Saiful Islam is that we are open to dialogue here. We are not against anyone here in this mosque. But when someone is representing Islam as he is, he's a figure that represents Islam in our community, although he is the minority. Before I tell him to, um, if, he, if he continues to spread his message, yeah, come to us here. He needs to educate himself regarding Islam. Luton's highlighted always, always for the wrong reasons. And, uh, you know, when people, people are kind of scared to come into Bury Park, oh, this is extremists here, extremists there. Fine, we have a small, you know, minority group that, you know, have, give us these few problems. But as I said, every town, every country you go to will have these kind of minority groups. And for us, uh, as Lutanians, I think it just highlighted by the media in the wrong way. And, um, I mean, it's, it's not that bad. The word Muslim extremist, it just labels everyone as Muslim. No, no, look, the majority of people here in Luton are Muslim. And uh, there's only six, seven young lads that stand around giving leaflets out that are, you know, a part of this group. But as I said, six, seven of them, and then the media highlights them as Muslim extremists. That, that makes it look like the whole of the community is extremist. We're trying to show people that there is an alternative way uh, to live their life. It's called uh, submission which is basically what Islam means. And we're trying to expose all the fallacies of the Western government, man-made law, and even false religion, and to show that when God created us, He ultimately gave us one divine way for everyone to believe in and follow. And obviously a lot of people um, uh, give out many slogans about peace and harmony, but ultimately no one has a clue how to achieve that. But what we say is through Islam, one may attain peace. Because if you truly worship and submit to the Creator, then this is the true meaning of tranquility and peace. And ultimately, that's what we're trying to do, hand out this leaflet, explain to people what Islam is about. I don't subscribe to either of their philosophies at all. Um, they're both extremist and do not represent what I believe in and the council believes in and the town believes in. 
and um, they don't represent the vast majority of people and they are damaging, both of them, both organisations are damaging to Luton. They're certainly damaging to the Muslim community from one end because they do not represent by far the majority that live here. Uh, and EDL uh, say they represent the Christian community, but they certainly don't represent me. Certainly EDL say they represent uh, Luton and they love Luton. Their actions do not uh, give that impression because everything they do, their march they're talking about on the 5th of May will damage Luton um, because it will appear on Sky News and that will give this impression again that Luton is under attack. But they don't, but they do that, so I don't know how you can possibly love a place and then damage it in the process of what you're doing. <laughs> Sorry, I've got a laugh at that. That is absolutely, that's, that's, she should have her own show, she's a comedian. Where's Hazel Simmons live? She doesn't live in Luton, does she? She's the leader of Luton Borough Council, the leader. And she's failed this town miserably, absolutely. I'm born and bred in Luton. I love this town, I love the people. Um, what I don't love is extremists and I don't love Sharia law and I don't love the ideologies of Islam um, and we have massive, I mean massive problems in this town and she is responsible for sweeping them under the carpet since she's been in power. She is what we commonly call a chocolate teapot. She's useless. Both these groups have been using term terminologies and the language and the tactics which are very divisive um, and that is where we are seeing our role as, as community-based organizations and faith-based organizations that we want to um, uh, uh, sort of increase the capacity or build the capacity within the communities to be able to resist um, uh, and, and, and show their resilience against any of such divisive politics of these two groups. The Luton in Harmony campaign is a, a, a campaign about understanding each other's cultures more than we do. And that's what it was set up to do, so that we all kind of agree to sign a pledge that says, I will find out more about my neighbour, I will work with my neighbour, I will live com you know, next to more, in peace with my neighbour, and to wear a Luton in Harmony badge. Despite efforts of various campaigns and organisations, Luton has still been hitting the headlines in its fight to find its identity. The opening of an Islam information centre sparked protests in the town as it was believed to have links with Muslim extremists. A local mosque in Berry Park also fell victim to difference of opinion when it was firebombed in March. In addition, Luton was the focal point of two national documentaries earlier this year. The programme was absolutely disgusting really because it was focusing on uh, Saiful Islam and his uh, 26 um, followers. And uh, <clears throat> I, was, I was told as well that he slapped Tommy Robinson down here in Berry Park, which was absolutely disgusting. We don't tolerate any form of hate, any form of violence, any form of aggression. Islam does not allow that in the slightest form. So when you see these documentaries out on TV, it gives us a bad, it gives us a bad name. It gives the whole of Luton, it, it, it creates a negative negative effect on the people here in Luton. And we seem to be uh, one of these places where it's okay to attack because it's, well, it's Luton. It's okay to attack Luton because it's only Luton. Well, it's not okay to attack Luton, actually. Ammunition never ceases against the town as Luton has even more recently been thrusted into the worldwide press. The English Defence League were left denying their involvement with a mass murderer in April as once again the town tries to escape extremism. Under tight security, they drove Breivik to court this morning as a country held its breath, waiting for more revelations. It's impossible to know what's going on behind the eyes of Anders Breivik. Hard to see if the evil he carried out haunts him, whether he hears the screams of those he killed. Breivik maintains that his horrific attacks came after he joined a network of like-minded nationalists. The police here doubt such a network exists, 
though Breivik insists he attended a meeting in the UK at which some English nationalists were also present. He's an individual, he'd done what he'd done, he'd done a horrific thing, he murdered human beings. But a lot of the stuff he says in his uh, papers is true. The fact that he murdered all those people, that's shocking, that's murder, it's disgusting, he's a monster. But a lot of his rhetoric is true. The stuff he says about Islam in Europe and in Norway and over here is true. Peace and harmony, we've got it. That's what we want. We want the Islamic community to integrate the same way every other community has. But you, you, you walk around here today, there's West, there's West Indians, there's blacks, there's some, some in, in Indian lads out there. There was loads last year, but you'll never see a Muslim because they will not integrate. And that's not our fault. That's not our fault. We've done everything we can. And now it's a time where we just identify the problem because demographic statistics, birth rate, show that over the next 20, 30 years, this is going to go like bang. And it's going to be a big, a big war zone. But do you, do you want to integrate with Muslims? No, we want them to integrate with us. We shouldn't have to integrate with them, should we? How does he expect to integrate when he has these messages of hate directed to the Muslim community? Integration is not possible with these people if they continue to say these bad things. He can continue to say bad things about Islam. The only, when I look at him and when I look at his followers, the only thing that I feel in my heart is, is pity for them. Because um, I, for me, being a scholar, the, the, the biggest disease of the heart is ignorance, lack of knowledge. It's a, it's a lack of knowledge, it's a lack of understanding that causes problems in our communities today. It, it, it renders our community backwards. For this diverse town, communication is key to integration. With the corruption of two extremist groups, the rest of the community find themselves the glue trying to piece together tensions. Yet, with a town full of differing opinions, the option of moving on is made near impossible. I would love to engage in dialogue with Tommy Robinson. That's not his real name, isn't it? He's, he's named after a football hooligan. That goes to show the level of extent of uh, their ignorance, really. Um, as long as they do not open dialogue with us, there will be no improvement regarding the deal. It's, it will be just a, it will be just a reoccurring thing. I'm not pretending that Luton hasn't got challenges because it would, that would be silly to say that. But um, we're a very diverse town. We are thriving. We have a growing airport. We've got fantastic transport links, um, and we have a community that, in general, rubs along together pretty well. As this aspiring town continues its battle for integration, the future of Luton is left uncertain. Currently swallowed by negative reputations, the need for communication becomes ever more present. If the dominance of extremist groups persist, the multi-faith society faces confrontation. It, well, it, it can only end up in one. It, it can only end up one way. If it's not resolved, it will only end up in conflict and you know and sectarianism. And th th that's that's the truth. You know, people don't want to hear it, but that that's the only way it can go. If it's not dealt with. The future for Luton is marvellous. I can see a very good future for Luton. As long as this EDL, if they do not amend their ways, if they are stopped by the local authorities in again coming into Luton, causing disruption, causing a lot of confusion, if they are stopped, we as the majority have many plans here for Luton. Tensions will be resolved because as I said, it's only a few uh, minority groups that uh, try to create these tensions and I think Luton will, will overall become uh, a bigger and better place and uh, you know Luton has had a lot of problems uh, always faced to and, and, and Luton always comes up on top of it. I'm not saying that uh, harmony is possible simply because there is no issues to be tackled in the town. There are issues to be tackled in the town. There are issues of so-called um, uh, ghettoization or people not interacting with each other but then that is where our role comes in. Come to Luton. Come, come here. Come into the shopping centre. Come and talk to the people. Go into Berry Park. Buy some shopping in Berry Park and see what the people are like in Berry Park. Rather than say it's a, it's a no-go area, for goodness sake. It's absolute rubbish.